Why, hello everyone. Welcome to Redneck Ways. How's everybody out there in YouTube land doing? I hope everybody set fun and dandy. Not doing too awful bad guys here in Old Kentucky. It is Tuesday evening. And um, it is actually 10.30. So it's getting kind of late. But I was been trying to figure out what I want to, what radio I want to try to get fixed. Next, I have about four or five in my collection. There's a couple I'll have to do this winter. They're just going to need too much. But this here, what you see in front of you, is a RCA uh, Radiola Super Hat. And um, it is a 1928, I do believe. I have to look at my book to make sure. We can pause it for a minute. All right, it's a 1924 guys, six tube super portable. That always gets me. That super portable because this thing weighs about 50 pounds. So what? I what I thought, guys, I was wanting to do is um, I've had this for a little while, but I haven't checked anything on. It. I haven't checked the coils, and I haven't checked the tubes, and uh, it is missing two tubes. So that's why I, we need to check the transformers and see, because this is in a cat, what they call a catacomb. Um, they've got it all in like a pan of pine resin, all the wires, anything, the, the transformers, everything, which we'll, I'll show you here in a minute, are, they're in like a pan and it's full of pine resin. And they did that because back in 1924, this was top secret their technology inside this and they didn't want nobody else getting it and you know making their own so if the transformers are bad in these it could be uh, it just can be dead end because it's pretty much it's going to be a boat anchor um, there is a way I saw a couple videos a way maybe run um, a wire beside the tube and go and just like take the pin, take the wire and hook it to one I don't even know which one the glass singer hooked it to but he hooked it to a pin which I don't even think this one you can do that because this one if I can remember I don't even have pins on the tubes so yes in a nutshell if the transformers are bad this is just going to be cool looks but for, this was made in 1924 and just look guys how beautiful this thing is uh, this, uh, just a little while ago is the first time I put any type of cleaner. I put some pledge on it. And I, I mean, I didn't break a sweat. I just put some pledge on it and wiped her down. And that's what I got. So I'll take you up a little closer so you can get a little bit better look at it. And it don't really even have all that many scratches. It's all original. Just a beautiful piece. And I'm hoping... With it looking as pure as it is, you know, it, it got taken well care of and nobody put too many boats through it or whatever. Because this is a battery set. And um, I say the um, A voltage probably is about six boats and no more. If you put more than six boats, it'll blow the filament. So hopefully nothing, no shenanigans has happened like that to this one. And to tell you the truth, the reason why I haven't checked the transformers is just because I didn't want no bad news. Because these are notorious for bad transformers. So, I got my old Lafayette multimeter here. It's not as old as the radio we're working on, but it's pretty close by about 20, I think it's 1968. Nice little multimeter if you've watched my channel before we went all through this when I bought it and I it was brand new still in the package and it's made in Japan and I've never put a battery in it it works I uh, can't actually get the back off of it so somebody's put a battery in it but like I said it, it was it came in the box and I thought it was just uh, old new stock and I went to try to put a battery in, couldn't get it apart, but I turned it on, and it works, so it has to have a battery. But I didn't put one in, so. Oh my gosh, what am I talking about, battery? Okay, back to the radio. 
So, it's got this beautiful, now the handle, it had this leather looking handle that sat here, guys. And I didn't get that. When I bought the radio off, of, off the fella I purchased it off of, it was missing that. When I first bought it, I thought maybe it was for like a speaker to mount on or something. Um, here's some speaker. Right here's one of the speakers that you could have got with it. It is, uh, let me turn you guys around here. It is also an RCA um, Rota Alloy. Oh, it's heavy too. It's Cassie RCA loudspeaker. The Radio Corporation of America. And it's also, this is a 1925 speaker. So, let me get you back around to the radio. Alright, back guys. Um, <coughs> and what this, the radio is sitting on is actually a 19, I, I'm thinking it's 1947 Remington sewing machine. Which I'll make a video on it myself. But somebody, I just didn't have the room for it and got rid of it. Um, it works perfect. Um, I mean, it needed a couple drops of oil and all that. Um, maybe I could poke it up you know, since I'm talking about it. I can't not show you. But I like that. Uh, Whoa, see how heavy that radio is, guys? I might set this over here for, for a minute. Alright, that was almost a, a bad accident. But yeah, they just don't make things, guys. It, that's what I was going to say about the radio. They do not make things like the radio, the sewing machines. They just don't make it no more. They don't want to make it no more because this stuff, when they built this, this stuff was built to last. When you bought a sewing machine or a radio, the customer um, knew that they was going to get something with their hard-earned money that would last them their entire life. And it, there was no throwaways. I mean, it's crazy how things have changed. But yeah, this one's even, I love the color of it because it's a kind of manly, you know what I mean? Let me get her up here. Arr. There we go, guys. I don't know if you can see it. That's a Remington. I've never saw a Remington. Brent, take you all over here. The bobbin and everything works perfect. Um, I, you know, it's funny because I was needing one. Um, I'm going to make me make myself a tarp for my boat out of canvas, and um, I, was, I was needing something to sew it with. And this has a very strong motor on it, a little electric motor on the back. And like I said, it works absolutely perfect. And it is quiet, and it's just crazy how it still works. If any of you guys out there know what gear this is, put it down in the comments because I'm not 100% sure it's a Remington. But don't y'all love those collars? The phone's really not giving it just. It's tan and like a green here on the cap. But I don't know how, guys, I got onto my sewing machine. But let me get everything fixed and I'll be right back. Let me get the radio back up on the table. Alright guys. Like I was saying, it's a battery battery set. You have your A plus, um, your B plus. And I don't think this has C. This must have been after they figured that out. The real old radios, you had to have uh, your uh, C minus. And... Uh, they, it wasn't very long they figured it out where you didn't have to have three batteries because the C battery was your negative and it would put the negative it, I may be getting this wrong but <coughs> on your uh, grid voltage it, or, or something like that it, I forget race that I have to when you're working on radios and you're learning there's so much to learn it has something to do with the voltage though I do know that and it had to be negative but anyway this radio here I don't know if you can see that up here this one here oh shoot this one had the C minus that's the only radio I have I have two I got four farm sets and that one's the only one that, that had the C minus 
and uh, I knew all about it when I was working on it, and I've already forgot. Every radio is different, and you get working on them, you know, until you do like a thousand of them. At least for me, you can't. I can't remember it all. But yeah, the C minus, it had to be on the grid, grid voltage, and it wouldn't work. And they did. They figured that out. So, and these on each side was your battery box. Put your big old batteries in there. Here's a picture of what the batteries look like. Um, it kind of gives you a, a chart here. The red is B plus. That's what your batteries would look like right there. And here's the A. They was in cylinders, and the B was a big square box. This was made September 1924. And it, you have batteries on both on both sides. Both sides of it. It also shows a picture and tells you where the everything goes. These wires actually supposed to be running. There's a hole back here that they run into. It, huh? I was wondering why I put them weedier coils. Huh? All right. Well, let's get down to the brass tacks, guys, and let's get checking some voltages. So let me. Guys, over here a little closer, and that's what we're going to do. All right, guys, to open this up, you just got to twist this little knob here, and you pull. And there is what I was talking about. That's the catacomb, and uh, all the transformers and everything is down in here. I'll pick you guys up here. Everything's in this tin box. Everything's inside this. And this has got pine resin all in it. Now, I've seen guys take these when they's bad and put them in an oven and heat it up and make that pine get liquefied and pour it out and then try to go in and fix it but that is a big job um, this right here these rubber things I just noticed they're getting pretty bad those are going to need changed here soon those little rubber things that's what turns your tuning capacitor but it is missing three tubes, and these little boogers are expensive. And over here, kind of looks like a transformer. I don't know really into what this is. Um, I haven't looked up a schematic for this. There's not too awful much going on here, but at the same time, there is. I don't know what that little box back there was for. There's some more paperwork on the back wall there. Get y'all down there. A little bit of paperwork back there in the back. Can I get it where you guys can read it? But there's a little box. A little box right here. And I never, I've always wondered what that was for. It had to have a purpose. And it's got some kind of like resistor or something over here. I really need a schematic to figure out all this stuff because that's probably something important. So we'll check that, see if that's got uh, continuity and see if it's oming out. And we'll check these tubes and we'll we'll check these because I'm not for sure which one is the transformer. But we'll just do some poking around guys. Alright guys, I'm going to check this thing. I'm trying to find if it says something on it. So we can see maybe what it is. Let me get my magnifying glass. My eyes seem like they're getting worse and worse. 
Let me see here, guys. It's not really helping. It may be a big capacitor, too. It's a good size. Or it could be a resistor. It's a quality condenser. So that's a capacitor. Yeah. Two microfarads. Yeah. That's a weirdest looking capacitor I've ever saw. So I doubt I'll get any reading on that, guys. Let's see. I don't have. I would have to. I got a uh, capacitor check with it. It'd be hard to get it over here. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not getting anything on that. Yeah, I am. Well, it owned out a little bit. Huh. Okay, it moved. Let me see if I can get you off. I guess it's good, guys. <sighs> I didn't think you can check pastures like that on the ohms. All right, we got that checked. That seems like it's doing pretty good. Let's uh, check the tubes, guys. Sorry, I should have paused it. Let's start with this one here. Here's what they look like, and they're weird because see how on the bottom they just got the little nubs, and they have this little piece here, and that locks in. It had a sticker here at one time. I don't know. I forget what these are. Maybe they say back here in the back. Alright guys, I was looking back on that chart back here in the back and I was trying to see what this was. This does have C minus for the grid voltage and that is the C battery goes in that little box I was pointing out that I was wondering what went for, went for, went to. So, <clears throat> yeah, this is, it, I should have knew that. It is a pretty early set. So, so alright. Alright, and uh, guys, what I want to do is, I got my fingers crossed that this is going to work. I want to get the two tubes ordered, and that's going to cost me about $150, for, or the three tubes, it's going to cost me about $150, but what I want to do is get, hopefully it's working, and I want to sell it, I either want to sell it or I want to trade, but I love the radio, but what I want is a um, Boomerang Zenith radio it's the it's got the shape of the boomerang for the speaker that's what I have been looking for for the last two years and um, they're probably they are they're very if they're in really good shape they're pretty daggone expensive because they're very soft after so if anybody's interested and has a boomerang zenith boomerang radio and you, you might want to do a trade or something uh, let me know because that's what I want in my collection. I mean, I love this radio stuff. Don't get me wrong. And I'm very happy to have it in my collection. But, it's big. And it takes up lots of room. And I just, you know, I like, I like the boomerang. The Zenith boomerang more. Alright. I just want to put that out there, guys. I don't think I've ever told y'all my most favorite radio in the world. So now you know. You all like boomerang, Zenith boomerang radios? 
They're absolutely beautiful. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, guys, Google it. They are absolutely stunning. All right, guys, we're going to check the filaments <clears throat> on these three tubes. I've never checked them, so let's see if I can get this propped up here somehow. Somehow, some way, so you guys can see. Probably be safer like that. Let's see here. May I get my tube checker out? So I don't know if I can test them with the ohms or not. Should be able to. Don't seem to be. Oh. Let me get my tube checker out, guys. I don't think I can read that. I may be wrong. All right, guys, I got my tube checker now. Let's see. Let's see if we can test it now. Should have been able to own it out. Maybe. It... Let's see. Yeah, it's good. Can you see that light come on? Ah, I forgot that I had a short wire. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I was going to turn this light out there. There. So y'all can see. Alright, let's try that again. It ain't really coming on bright, but y'all can see it, can't you? So that one's good. Let's do the other one. That's what that one looks like. It's it's a little bit different than the other one. It actually says a radiola, so that must be original. Yeah, it says RCA. Let's see what it does here. It's good. And with these, what I've looked up online, I'm holding a hundred dollars right here in my hand. They're a hundred dollars a tube, for the most part. I mean, you may find them cheaper, but let's check this last one. And that means we have three left. And this one is also original RCA. A hundred years old. Does it still work? Well, that last one was a hundred years exact because this is 1920. This was, yeah, 1924, so it's 2024. So this radio is exactly 100 years this year. I think we got a bad one. I think this one's bad too. 
that falls one more time, I'm going to get aggravated. I can't get a hold of it. Well, that's good. Thank goodness. My gosh. I was just having a hard time getting it on there. That's good and bright. I was getting scared there for a minute. So that tube's good. And I can't remember. I'll have to go back on the video. Remember, see what hole it was in. I think it was this one here. Now, yeah, I don't know if these are all the same or not. I don't know if they're all the same tubes or not. I'm sure they're not. Alright, guys. We got the tubes. So the three tubes that we have are good. So that, that, that's I'm happy about that because I've already got enough on my plate trying to find three here. Guys, I just wanted to point out this badge. I mean, you, they just don't do this no more. This is a metal badge tells all the information with little little tiny screws holding in. I mean, how neat is that? Now you're lucky if you get a sticker. And it's still just like it was the day it was made. Alright guys, I'm going to try now. I'm going to try now to see if the transformers are good. And like I said earlier in the video, I don't have a schematic for it. So, I'm just going to go through and kind of touch these leads down through here. And I'm going to check this over here. Cause I'm not for sure. It looks something like a transformer, but then again, it don't. So, so we'll just kind of touch everything here and see what it's doing. Set this here. First thing I'm going to touch over here on is this little thing. I think it may be an uh, antenna. I'm not for sure. I really should have looked up a, a schematic for made the video, but the, actually, it just I was sitting there and I thought about about looked up or looked at. I was like, oh, I like to see if that thing, the tubes are good and all that, because I need a new project. And I said, well, I'll make a video. So it's kind of you know spiritual. So let's check it over here best we can. Put the ground on the ground. Okay, that looks good. So that coil over here is good, guys. Whatever it is, it's either a transformer or antenna. So I'm just going to hold my ground over here on this. And just go down the line. Maybe it will work that way. That one's good. That was good. That one moves a little. That one moves a little. That one moves a little, not much. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. Alright, that one. Oh, 
hope I get this one. All right. I think we got one more here, this orange one. There we go. There we go. Good connection. Well, I think it'd be safe to order a get some tubes. Because everything seems like it's all linking together. This is the battery seat coming in here. This is where the batteries come in. And I about bet you the transformers is over here. Bet you anything, then that's where the transformers is. This one and this one. So everything, everything, guys, seem to be all right. Let me check these. Uh, oh, I forget the name of them. Restoots. These things here turn up the juice. The amplifier and the detection. Real stats. Is that what I'm, the word I'm looking for? Is that the word I'm looking for? Can't hardly get to it. Oh yeah, we're good guys. We... That one's getting hooked up. I don't know if I can reach that. Alright, I think that one would be good too. I mean, I'll do it, but I can't show you because I can't set that thing up here. Let me get my leads over here. Get my leads over here. Oh yeah, she's good. And let me check the tuner, the tuning capacitors. Them things are just crazy. They're on like a ball. See that? It's like a little ball here. And then when you turn the knob down there, this turns. This whole thing turns. And then it turns this, and that rubber goes up against this and turns. Just neat stuff. They they made it with the stuff they had. Alrighty, guys. I think that'll about do it on this thing. Um, I'm going to uh, be getting try to get some tubes. If any of you guys out there know where a person can get a hold of some tubes for this thing, let me know. I sure appreciate it. And, uh, we'll get them ordered. Get them in there. But yeah, I'll do my research. I looked them up when I first bought the radio about a year ago. And the tubes, only ones I found was coming straight out of a museum. And they was wanting right at 100 a piece. So hopefully when I go back online, I can find them a little bit cheaper. But alrighty, guys. I think that'll about do it. Also, uh, I want to recommend a movie to you guys. If you all haven't seen it. Um, we went camping this last past weekend. And the Wi-Fi isn't very good there. So I stopped and uh, I was looking for some movies to watch down while, you know, at night time. Because it gets a little boring at night. And, um. I ran across a movie I've been looking for a long time, and it's called The Egg and I, and it's got, it has, uh, oh, shoot, I forget her name, but she played Cleopatra, and
and uh, really, it's a great movie, guys. Um, get a second, Google that, Google the trailer. Great movie, I think it was uh, made in the 40s. So, the, it's called The Egg and I, and uh, really neat. Really great little movie. I love the old movies. Uh, the newer stuff today, I just don't watch it because I just seems like I'm not part of it so but the old classics and the old Hollywood I absolutely love love to watch so and also um, I watched uh, a movie because it was a two-in-one type deal and it was uh, a talking mule and his name was Frankie I think the talking mule Frankie Frankie the Talking Mule or something like that. And that was funny. It was kind of like a army movie with the top, um, a talking donkey. So, alright guys. I hope everybody out there in YouTube land is doing great. I hope everybody's doing well. And it's starting to cool down a lot here in Kentucky. And fall is right around the corner. And it seems like our summer has flew by. But at the same time, it's been really, really hot. So I'm looking really, really, really forward to the cooler weather. And um, I want to uh, be able, because as soon as it cools down a little bit, I want to go do some more treasure hunting. I want to take the uh, metal detector out. And I also want to get to the dump site, the old 1930s and 40s dump site, and look for some old vintage bottles and stuff. So I'm literally looking forward to that. I could do it now, but it's so hot, and poison sumac and poison ivy so bad. And where that old uh, garbage dump is, it's all nothing but weeds right now. So, alright guys, until the next one, I'll see you right here at Redneck Ways. Bye guys, you all have a great, great Wednesday. You guys stay safe. Bye guys.